Hello, hello, I'm Kads, and welcome to today's video. And for the first time, I am not alone on the channel. We do have a special guest, a fellow free-to-play professional raid player by the name of Erroneous. How are you doing, man? Welcome to the channel. Good, Kaz. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about your niche on YouTube, at least for Out of the Raid? What do you like to do? What's your favorite part of the game? Cool. Yeah. So for me, I've been free to play for over four years now, since November 2019, and I have multiple counts, but I love grind. The grind is the best for me. And in terms of what I go over and on my account is just different little tutorials, older videos that are tutorials on faction wars. I went over the new Cursed City a lot now. I love doing PvE content, but more recently I've been diving in headfirst into the PvP aspect of things because I feel like my account has gotten to a place where I can start to compete more in the higher ends of PvP. And I really love Live Arena. I know some people knock at it, but I'm really getting into it a lot. Cool. So if any and all of that sounds amazing and you know it does, then be sure to check out his channel, which is going to be linked down below in the description box. And yeah, so today we're going to be talking about fusion champions that have aged well. And we actually did a parallel to this video on his channel where we talked about fusion champions that aged poorly. So be sure to check that one out on his channel when it goes live. But uh, yeah, I guess I will kick things off here. Starting off with, I'll say Walking Tomb Drang. Okay. Um, I think he is Night Rev, and he was. I I thought he was really good when, before he came out, and I know a lot of people were really hesitant about him. And then hard mode Ice Golem came out, Frost Spider applications and other things, and he kind of grew into uh, and Hydra as well. He kind of grew into his kit. So what do you, what'd you think about walking to Drang way back in the day? I think he's good. I didn't actually go for this fusion, sadly. Oh no. And it was because at first I was basically like, okay, I wanted to focus on masteries on my champions and I just wanted to take a break from fusions. And so I didn't go for him because I, like, I already have my spider team down pat. I don't need another HP burner, but he's more than just that. And I missed out on a really good champion here. Yeah, so for those who are less familiar on the A1, attacks one enemy two times and it can activate HP burns after attacking. A2 is bread and butter ability here, three turn cooldown, full AOE HP burn that cannot be resisted, meaning it needs no accuracy to land. Super good for the Frost Spider. And then the A3, it's an equalize, which is one of the sneaky best heals in the game. If someone is staying at high HP, he brings everyone up to the highest, and it is a it can be a massive or a full heal in a lot of contexts. That's very true. And especially for the new Cursed City, if you utilize this guy, he's super, super strong. And then unresistible HP burn. If you can utilize this guy in one of the rotations, if you're allowed to, I don't know if you can use him in this rotation for Amius, but that not resistible burn is huge especially if you have him with an awakening level two three four star even one star like a a brimstone but personally with brimstone you're going to want to put accuracy on him but again the hp burn unresistable it can definitely chunk away the hp from the amius boss so not a bad ability and then of course for spider he's a god and for ice golem hard mode also a god so he's he's very very strong Yep, one of the few champions that I've seen be somewhat successful in Ice Golem Hard. And then the specialty in Spider, it's just consistency of the run. Like, it's guaranteed every single run he's going to land HP burn on every target. So you can always depend on it. Him and uh, Ignatius, I believe. That's Only actually why I didn't go for him, because it was Ignatius that I had from a very early standpoint oh, of playing. You had. Play, okay. And I always used Ignatius for my Spider runs. And then now that we have Newt, now that we have Artac, I use Artac on stage 20 if I just want to farm food and get some quick cash. And it's just so much easier with Artac these days. And then you could use this guy too. I'm sure he can easily solo stage 20 as well. Cool. So what's uh, your first champion on your list? So the champion that I would choose is actually Lana Tharl. So we talked a little bit about this champion earlier, but did, he is did. a high elf. And he was brought into the game in 2022 in August. And so this guy, I love the aesthetics. There's sometimes where you look at aesthetics of champions and then you, I just like to go for them because they look so cool. 
And this guy reminded me of when I used to play the game RuneScape, for example, and you could get specific armor that you could trim and it has gold yeah, trim. Yeah. And it was okay. my favorite armor set in that game. And that is one of the reasons why I was like, I need this guy. I need this guy right now. I don't care. And yeah, I went for him. And he, I also read his kit and I was like, okay, he has a pretty decent kit too. Not only for Scarab boss, but he's also good for wave content. He's also good for now he's really, really good for he's aged so well because of Fire Knight hard mode with the ally attack, but also survivability with the shields, HP in all battles. I believe the HP for all battles is in Doom Tower, if I'm yep, not mistaken. Tower. But I utilize him a lot in Doom Tower. Ally attack, big shields, because it keeps your allies alive for a longer period of time. And when you're in Doom Tower hard, you need to survive. You need to figure out a way to survive. And he brings that to you. And a lot of CCs were knocking this guy saying he's absolute trash. And I'm like, it's not just about the damage. Sometimes it's about support. It's about survivability. So if you're into PVE, you need to really think about these PVE champions in a different light because they may be a huge cha game changer for your account. And this guy was for my account when I got him. I think he's amazing. And yeah, he's aged really well. I, I couldn't agree more. He's tailor-made for Scarab King, and he's actually still on my Scarab King team. I don't run the Eurost solo. I do run like a full five-man squad turn meter control with Newt now. Um, and I'm he's with just, you. I he's, do the five-man squad. I don't use yeah. Eurost either. He's, and everybody asks built. me, why don't you use Eurost? And I'm like, <laughs> dude, it's faster with It's faster five without, man. exactly. Yeah. So, But... I, I the one thing I remember from when he came out is that everyone was dogging on the ally attack and saying like Creela was better and even though it's yeah. like she brings in three allies versus all and it's like the stun is cool but it's just like they're they're on the same level or he's even better and now with the advent of hard mode Fire Knight everyone's like oh hey that guy was yeah, a, <laughs> Krila and really Fire really Knight good now mode. exactly nobody so. Like, yep, I, I, I saw the signs long before. I was like, Scarab King and whatever else. Because for me, he was just, hey, an ally attack. I'll take it. I don't have Cardio, you know? Right. Plus, he's even better than Lanicus, too, who also only does yeah. an ally attack of three. And I have Lanicus. Three random. So, and everybody's like, uh, use Lanathar. I was like, I already know that. <laughs> I'm already using him. <laughs> exactly. So, my next one, I'm going to jump... A little bit higher because i don't want you to steal him but uh <laughs> vlad the nightborn and nice. he is one of those champions that i feel like just people forgot that he got buffed and they just like oh it's the old vlad who is not great in fairness but after the buff we're talking aoe decreased defense the only champion in the entire undead horde faction if anyone didn't know that who has aoe decreased defense with block active skills perfect bail on himself hides himself and then straight, straight in after that into another AOE, which, which supplies a leech, can steal some turn meter from the factions, which is not always happening, which is not the best. But when it does happen, it's really nice. You can kind of go back to back turns and then, you know, healing himself on the A1. So after the buff, double AOEs with the lockout, decrease defense, he's one of the best champions for faction wars and even in Doom Tower stages. And uh, he's on my like Doom Tower wave clear team. Yeah, he's a very strong champion. Now, I, I will say I had him in my vault for a while because he wasn't buffed, and I had him at level 50. And so I recently built him in the past year, and he does work. And plus, that destroy max HP is really strong, and you could you know, argue to use him in Scarab Boss too. Yep. I mean, he's just that good because he does drop defense, and he does the decrease max HP. Funny enough, I rebuilt mine recently for the Cursed City, right? That's going to be a theme in today's video is the Cursed City is, is going to be huge for a lot of champions, a lot of fusions that age well because I used him and I changed him and put him in a destroy set for the Scarab boss. Okay. And he demolished him. So I was like, all right, that works because I have a few destroy sets that are actually really strong, even though it's a niche set and it worked on him. It worked. Absolutely. I think there, there's also the cool synergy if you happen to have his his brother, um, where they can like they can start to make each other do really crazy things. But that's more of an added bonus. But yeah, after the buff, just 
just folks pay attention when they buff champions here and there you know like the teelas of the world they can actually become really really good so just give them a second chance my next one which is super super meta for the, at least the current rotation of uh, the curse city and that is going to be morrigan so back in the undead hordes here morrigan i want to say she was 2021 for her fusion but uh definitely one of the most underrated fusions of her time and the, th the thing that a lot of people fell into at least the trap i think is that they're like ah she's not as good as lysandra which is true but not everyone has lysandra so like for me she was she was is my lysandra because i don't have one and so like i think a lot of people just kind of put her in that box of like yeah she's not as good and then all of a sudden we need that heal reduction on a certain boss that is ridiculously hard to uh deal with and she's really coming to her own now um, at least for Amias, but in general, I think she's just underrated as far as an arena champion. She's sneaky good. Heal reduction is one of those things that you don't think you need it until you see it in action. When that UDK is trying to heal up, denied. When that Python is trying to cleanse, denied. So like all those things, she can stop champions from healing. And then on top of that, you know, speed or turn meter manipulation, increased speed, turn meter fill, and then she can steal buffs and uh, place a true fear if they're. Uh, champions and play sneakers actually if it's a boss so she can do pve and pvp at the same time and then why not decrease speed on the a1 to boot speed and all auras on the or speed and all battles on the aura what nice. do you think of her i think she's an amazing champion that to your point yeah she she definitely became way better in cursed city way better against of course amius everybody's using her in this rotation at least most people are if they have her and then in arena she's insane because she steals and she fears and she places heal reduction, which is actually huge against champs, especially if they are champs that are support based and Pythion cleansers, or they're not going to cleanse that, that heal reduction off. So that's huge. And yeah, I think she's great. I think in general, she's great in terms of people saying she was bad and Lysandra's better. That's what happened when she first came out was people like, Oh, just get Lysandra. She's not that good. And I was like, no, she's really good. Yeah. Lysandra doesn't have fears. Lysandra doesn't have debuffs like that. You know, Lysandra doesn't do what they do, what, what she does. The heal reduction is actually massive. It's way better than people had realized. And yeah, now it was way stronger than people gave yeah, it credit for. Way better. So I think she's a fantastic champion all around. All right. So my next one is going to be Helicath. So okay. Helicath is an insane, insane champion. Sadly, I did not get Helicath in the fusion because I missed by one Lammy Burr because I fell asleep <laughs> and I missed by 50 points and I'm still so mad to this day. One Lammy Burr off. That's it. And I had multiple Lammy Burrs in my vault right now and I'm just so ticked off because of that to this day that I didn't get Helicath. He was so strong and back then I didn't have a one key Ultra Nightmare team built still. I don't know why. I could have, but I never did. And so with him, he would have been the answer to a one key and isn't the answer for most people for one key teams because he's, it's just, you just need him. You don't need like anything else, any other block damage. You don't need Demitha. You just need him with a, maybe a speed champion. And he just constantly puts the block damage for two turns on a four turn cooldown, which is insane. He's also ridiculously powerful in live arena. And if you face him, he's a nuisance. He makes the, battle extended way longer than you should have that battle extended to and unless you have an uko or another champion that's going to remove that block damage or goes through block damage like a mountain king or a basilius roanis he is just a pain in the butt or you have to have a sun wukong to strip him because he's just too powerful with that shield and block damage back to back and his passive with the block damage Yep. He can hit really, really hard if you're end game and you have good gear. Even if you have early game gear, he's still a pretty hard hitter. In general, if you attack champs that he places block damage on, he counterattacks. Occurs once per enemy turn, which is insane. So he's just there, literally like a minigun, hitting your team every single time until you're down. So yeah, Helicath, insane champion. Love this dude. Wish I had him. I don't have him. What about what are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I, uh, I have to join in there and then and say that I also don't have him for a very, very similar reason. I think it was an ice golem tournament where I uh, took a nap that went too long and uh, also missed it by one Lama Bear. And I, I want to say I burnt like 800 gems into Ancient Charge just trying to see if I could fix it. Didn't happen, obviously. But uh, so we're, we're uh, brothers in arms on that one of missing the Helicath fusion due to uh, mistakes. But yeah, no, you hit the nail on the head. One man army for Demon Lord Clan boss, which is insane for any a fusion champion of all things. And then just the sneaky, sneaky damage in arena. And yeah. he can just slowly chip away. And the funny thing is Helicath counters Helicath as well because he can ignore block damage on his own A1. That's the so crazy part. You can really just take down people while just hiding for the entire fight. And in the polymorph meta, you can't really risk stripping it off in a lot of cases. So you kind of just have to deal with them. And I, I know a lot of people like to run him. If they do, they like to run him in Savage. But if you want a future proof, I would say protection set, six piece, get a protected block damage going, protected shield, and he will just keep your team running for way longer than you might think. Yeah, he could end up being insane on anybody's team if they use him. Especially if I get him, I'm going to be putting him into a live arena build team. and He's going to just be super annoying. Okay, so my last one is going to be Oella, actually, from the Sylvan Watchers. And Oella, I think her problem was that it's one of those kits that you have to really see it or play with it to really understand how powerful it could be but on paper it's like yeah turn meter fill ink resistance okay extend the duration of buffs okay and then decrease speed it's like eh there's not much there and then you read the passives like yeah she throws some heals out every once in a while no 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 if you take a big smack from anything you get stacked up with continuous heals and she comes in with the a2 and extends all the duration and she can just keep increase resistance on your whole team the entire time and she's a massive healer and she's really come into her own specifically in like ice golem hard one of like the duo champions if you don't have an elva autumn barn or whatever so you can run her with an artak or her with a walking tomb drang and that's all you need for ice golem nowadays so she's really come into her own and just i guess misunderstood when she came out what do you think absolutely i agree because and honestly i use her in all of the iron twin affinity teams every single iron twin affinity on stage 15 she's in for my account and i just built her really fast nothing crazy just offset pieces and she does work now if you had her in like reflex or relentless sheesh like her Oh, healing yeah. is so incredible. Compare her to Syl the Drakes, which does healing every time. She heals way more than Syl. Right. Way more than Syl the Drakes. The increased resistance on top of it is I use her in I was using her. I don't need to anymore, but I was using her in my Doom Tower floors against the Tormans. You just okay. throw her in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, high resistance heals. She's ridiculous against the Tormans because nobody's she, they're not gonna land any freezes on you. Uh, so yeah, I mean, she's just so powerful. And then I also utilize her in my Hydra team as well for hard, for hard Hydra. And you could use her in brutal Hydra too, if, if you wanted to, but personally I use her in hard increased resistance. Then I have a champion that I can lower the resistance and they can be the tank for the mischief. And she just helps out so much. It's insane, but yeah, really, really strong champion here. P people slept on her hard saying that she's garbage and now she's she's very strong okay. so my next one my next champion that i picked that aged well would be rodos the lost groom rodos the lost groom was a very old 20 a february 2020 fusion champion he was before i started playing i started playing in november of 20 actually no he i started playing and he came out literally three months after i started playing and I couldn't get him because I was such a low level. Oh, and bummer. When you're a low level, you don't have shards. And what happens if you don't have shards? You can't finish the champ chases and you can't finish the summon rushes. So I couldn't get him because of the summon rush. And funny thing is, a lot of people were saying that his kid is bad. Oh, he's only single target. Oh, he's not good. And then he ended up being an absolute monster. 
and he ended up being too strong and he's gotten one or two nerfs over the years and he's still aging well in arena and live arena he's insane against amius i've i've seen so many videos on him just taking the health and stealing it with the a2 and the more health he steals he's literally gaining hp so it makes him so tanky and for arena uh for his passive i believe it is yeah this one right here the a3 yep. he can block revive if he steals a certain oh, amount of a3. hp in yep. arena so if you have tanky teams that he's going up against for support he just keeps chunking their health chunking their health and then he starts blocking revive and you're like what the heck and they had to nerf that ability in the past because he was blocking revive on people like crazy and getting extra turns. On top of that, he has extra turn mechanics. So if you hit him with his passive, he has a chance. It says decrease damage from enemy hits so that income and damage from any hit will not exceed 50% of his H max HP and grants an extra turn if this damage reduction occurs, which it's going to happen a majority of the time unless you place a block passive skill on him with like Ramantu or a Ronda, and then he goes in and takes a turn with the A3, knocks somebody down, A3 then turns into the A2, knocks somebody else down, or the A1 with a chance to take another extra turn. So he's just ridiculous. And even if he gets locked out, you can just A1, 25% chance of granting an extra turn, A1 again, and then he goes back to the A3. It's just so ridiculous. He's still so powerful. He just can't be... He's getting nerfed into the ground, apparently, but he was really not. It's like he's still just so powerful. Yeah, absolutely. He's one of the literal meta-defining champions because what does everyone tell you in the, in the, in, for the arena? It's like, you need a double hitter. Why? For Rodos. He literally shaped an entire meta of, like, you can't just hit him once because you activate him, he can wipe your entire team in one fell swoop. So yeah, definitely, definitely dangerous. I, I wasn't around back then either. And I've heard the horror stories of uh, on release Rotos just blocking revives instantly oh on the A3. Nuts. And I <laughs> yeah, can only and, imagine. And then bronze was the hardest, the hardest stage for arena. Oh, wow. You couldn't, getting into silver was difficult, not right. let alone um, getting into gold. Like arena was so different and they changed it. And now you know, a lot of the players are just doing one man teams. And honestly, it's the part of the player base is helping each other now too. Is there's a lot of one man teams now. So, you know, I think the players have come together as a community and made Arena better. But I think Playram also did the same. So thank God for that because whew, it was a it was a mess back then. I definitely remember that era of uh the grind and to try and get into gold. It was nearly impossible. But yep. Yeah, no, Rotos. I'm a proud owner of a Rotos, and I definitely make use of him every single day. And he just does he does work. Although I I tend to favor like the later in the game you get, you actually tend to favor the A2 a little bit more just to start gaining some health. Mm -hmm. Um, just because the tank meta, it's so hard to one shot people nowadays without that little boost. But a couple of A2s, and he's super ready to start blocking revives on the A3. So it's really, really strong champion. For the last champion that I'm going to pick that aged well, I think I'm going to go with Oli. One of my favorite champions in the game. So he came out before I started. He came out July 2019. One of the earliest fusions. And the first fusion ever was Sir Nicholas. But Foley was, you know, shortly after. And so with Foley, he hits fairly hard. He's not the hardest hitter in the game, of course. But the reason why he's aged so well is because now you have champions that you need to kill and they need to stay dead on that A3. He nukes them down. And for one, the specific champion is Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong is so annoying nowadays. He is literally top 15, top 20 meta champions now as a free champion that they gave us that was a login champion okay so um when i fight him if someone puts him with a udk i ban the udk a lot of times or i keep the udk and ban their speed hopefully they have a kaimar they sleep me and his passive guess what if you sleep him or debuff him he ends up gaining 50 percent turn meter boost and he heals himself and then most of the time he takes a turn if he's fast and and he has good nukes, right? 
if you have them good damage really fast, like mine is 245 speed, good damage, and he just nukes down Sun Wukong and they quit instantly on Live Arena because he's just that powerful. Now, some would say and argue that the champion Anithui is a little bit better for that to uh, go against Rodos or to go against Sun Wukong. But if you don't have Anithui because he's a void and extremely hard to get, then having Foley is, of course, going to be amazing, right? So I use Foley all the time, but I will say he does get banned a lot because people don't want to face him. And in Tag Team Arena, Classic Arena, I still have him in my Faction Wars. I utilize him a lot in the new Cursed City against bosses because he hits hard on his A2 as well. So people sleep on the A2. He actually does leech on this too. It's on a three turn cooldown, four hitter. And he's good against Fire Knight, normal mode. So people are sleeping because he has a four hitter on his A1, which could place decreased defense as well if you build him with a little bit of accuracy. Yep. Four hitter on his A2. And a three hitter, or sorry, a two hitter two on hitter. the A3. So the only thing that stops him is UDK. UDK stops the second hit because it's a it's an AOE then a single hit. So UDK will stop the single hit from his AOE here. But all you're looking for if, if you're facing Sun Wukong or you know Georgids or things like that, if they're not protected, they're going to die from the AOE hit. And that's why he's so powerful and he's really good in PVE as well and in wave clear content as well. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's definitely coming to his own. I, I agree that the multipliers probably need a little bit of tweaking, but I, I'm always hesitant when it comes to blocking revive champions because I don't really want a half rack type champion who can block revive you know like it, it sounds good on paper until you have to go against it right that kind of thing same mm -hmm. thing with the knee through blood twins like yeah, do i want him to hit harder maybe but not too hard because then he just kills everyone and uh, gg so i think there's a little give and a take there but yeah i i use him same thing sun wukong's but all, honestly what i want to shout out here is him against a duchess because True. when you get that AOE, she kind of reduces the damage, but that single target hit that comes afterward, her passive does nothing against it. So you hit Duchess twice, you get like a 10 or something combined multiplier between the hits, and you can just put her in the ground and she's gone forever. And along with the entire team, usually from the AOE. So really, really good. really good base speed of 105. Yeah, well. 105. So yep. he can be built, real, and his defense is pretty high. One of the higher defense for an attack-based champion and at 1100, which is not bad. Of course, Trunda takes the cake on the defense, but that's all dwarf champions in general. Well, it's, she holds all the defense in her thighs, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> all right. So this has been our look at the fusion champions that we think have aged well. Any final thoughts, Aronis, before we close out here? No other final thoughts. Just thank you so much for having me on the channel. Really appreciate it, man. And uh, be happy to come on again anytime soon. And we can definitely make that happen in the future. So that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Be sure to check out his channel, Erroneous' channel, in the de description box down below, as well as check out our other collaboration on his channel as well. So you can see both of those videos. Watch them both. Drop a like, hit the subscribe button on both of our channels. And thanks for watching. Have a good one.